Today we're going to be talking about section 14.8, which is Lagrange multipliers. This is a particular technique to be able to solve maximization and minimization problems uh, using, well, Lagrange multipliers. So the first learning goal today is to describe the method of Lagrange multipliers graphically. What's actually going on? Why are we using this method? And secondly, we're going to apply this method to solve maximization with constraint problems. And we're going to look at solving them both with Lagrange multipliers, and we're also going to solve these problems the old-fashioned way, meaning that we're going to plug in the constraint that we, and use it, we're going to plug in the constraint and then solve the resulting function using the maximization and minimization techniques that we learned from the previous section. So let's start off by looking at a motivating example of when and how we might use Lagrange multipliers. Similar to the probe example that we saw in a previous section, let's say that we have a mountain and the elevation of that mountain is given by some two variable function f of x, y. And I've drawn the mountain and I've also written onto it the horizontal traces of this mountain so we can get an idea of the elevation of that mountain. And let's say that there's a road that travels along the mountain and in the x, y plane that road has the equation x squared plus y squared equals 1. And the question that we're asking is, we want to be able to estimate the high and the low points of the mountain constrained by the road. So we aren't interested in finding out the very highest point on the mountain, the very lowest point on the mountain. We want to know, as this road travels along the mountain, what are the high and the low points of this road? Because the road, as it travels along, it's probably going to do something like this, right? It follows the contour of the mountain as it travels along. Maybe it doesn't squiggle quite that much, but you get the idea that this road is on the surface of the mountain, and we're asked to estimate the high and the low points of the, of the road. Visually, it makes sense that the high point is probably somewhere up here, and the low point is probably somewhere down here. And you can estimate that just by looking at the graph. Right, because this is where the road is up high, this is where the road is long, down low. Really, this is a composition of this road into this mountain function. However, uh, let's be a little more rigorous. Mathematically, what does it mean for this to be the lowest point of the road? If I were to analyze what's going on in this situation, one way to think about it is the fact that as the road dips down, it's crossing all of these horizontal traces and I want to get as low as possible, meaning that I want to reach the lowest horizontal trace that I can. And I see that the, the lowest horizontal trace that I cross in this picture is going to be right at this trace, at these two points. Maybe I shouldn't, I don't want to do those points in red. I'll do them in green. But I can get even lower than this horizontal trace, because as I pass below it, down here, I get even lower. I don't ever quite reach this horizontal trace, which is an even lower z value right, because these horizontal traces are my level curves that are level z values. We get really close to this z value, but we don't quite touch it. If we had all of the horizontal traces put in, so every single infinite number of level curves were exactly drawn onto this picture, which I can't draw an infinite number of level curves, but you can imagine mentally that in between each of these, there's a number of level curves. The place on the mountain that's going to be the very lowest place on the mountain is the level curve that's exactly parallel to the road. Because once the road is exactly parallel to the level curve, it means that it dips down and it touches that level curve tangentially, and it doesn't ever get any lower, because it's just exactly parallel, and then it goes up again. Another way that we can visualize this, and I'll go ahead and draw a graph of this from a bird's eye view. So let's say now, for the sake of orientation, I'm just going to keep my positive x-axis pointing this way. That's unconventional, but it's easier for me to think about um, looking down on top of the mountain this way. I'm going to go ahead and draw a contour plot where there are one, two, three, four of these before they join. One, two, three, four, and just one. And then they look something like this. I'm just sketching an approximate set of level curves, right? And in this approximate set of level curves, from the bird's eye view, we have a road that has this radius 1 that's, hmm, I shouldn't have made this so big, maybe. Um, 
a rogue's doing something like that, sure, that's a circle. Let's not worry about circles. But from what we saw in our three-dimensional view of the graph, now we can take a look at it as a contour plot where I'm taking the bird's eye view of the mountain, looking down from the top of the mountain, and I also see that I want to know what are the high and the low points along this road. That are, those are going to be the places where I reach the highest level curve, and it looks like right up here is a place where I reach the highest level curve. And I also want to know when I reach the lowest level curve, which maybe in this three-dimensional view, it looks like this level curve traces around to here, so these level curves are lower, and down here, is going to be the lowest point. Notice that this lowest point might not actually be the intersection of the level curve with the road, because if I push a little bit further, I might get to a place that it's a little bit further down. And the place where the high point and the low point meet are going to be the places where the road is exactly parallel to the level curve. So I'm going to write that down. That's the first thing that we notice from our graphical inspection, is that Max min points are when the road is exactly parallel to the level curves. Because I can't go any further down because I've gotten exactly level and then I start coming back up again. We're going to formalize this one more step mathematically, and this is a, something that takes a little bit of a jump. So instead of thinking about finding the, where my level curve is parallel to the road, which it turns out mathematically is actually sort of difficult, instead, we're going to take a look at where the gradient of the mountainside is exactly parallel to the gradient of the level curve. Why does that make sense? Well, we're relying on the fact that the gradient vectors are always going to be perpendicular to the level curves, and the gradient vectors are always going to be perpendicular to the road. So we're using the fact that in order for these two places to be parallel to one another, we're going to take something that's perpendicular to each and make sure that those perpendicular vectors are parallel. In this case at the min, the gradient of the mountain is pointing inwards, and the gradient of the road is pointing outwards. That's okay. Those are still parallel vectors. They're just multiplied by a scalar multiple that's negative. So formally, this is our formal conclusion, ta-da! The max min value is also going to be a, at a place where the gradient of the mountain function is going to be exactly parallel to the gradient of the road function. So these don't, aren't necessarily vectors that are equal to one another but they are vectors that are going to be parallel, which means that I'm going to multiply them by a scalar multiple. And this is my conclusion. This is the entire method of Lagrange multipliers. I'm taking the gradient of my mountain function, the function I want to maximize, and set it equal to some scalar multiple of the gradient of my constraint function, which in this case is the road. So I just said a lot of things. Let's go ahead and look at an example of this. <coughs> 